G'day guys, Jason from the Outer Farm here. We're actually heading out the Outer Farm property this afternoon. We're up to a late start. We've been avoiding scattered showers for the last four days. It's supposed to be clearing now. After, it's after lunch, so I'm heading out now. We've got some chores to do from, um, as you know, i am got that red pole I picked up oh, probably five days ago now. And he's in the process of weaning him off, so it's a five day process, giving him grain morning and night. So we've got to feed the little fella some grain I've got some timeless fencing at the front of the property which I've got to run some wire through. I've also rolled out some hay there probably a week ago now. It's been soiled on by the animals and also the rain. It's a bit thick so I need to spread that out a bit to, to enable the grass to go through it. And I've also got a section of fence. There's a big gap about a foot on the front of my property where I've terminated barbed wire fence and I've started electric fence. So I've got to come up with a solution how to fill that in. We'll head out now and we'll have a look and get some of these chores knocked off, I reckon. There's a young fella down the end there, having a chat to that droughty. We'll go in now and we'll give him some grain. Before we give the young fella some grain, we'll go check how much rain we had. I know Nicole took the range gauge out yesterday and we had 2 inches, 50 mil. Overnight, we've got another 10 mil to add to it. 60 mil in the last probably 4 days. This is where I normally have been feeding the young fella in this yard. We let him out in here yesterday into the holding bay or holding corral here yesterday. Give him some more room because as you can see at two inches of rain, sort of got this area pugged down. There's some of that hay we've been giving him and as you can see around here pugging, holding water right around there. So what we'll do is we'll grab the grain bucket now and we'll actually feed him outside. He's a good boy. Here's that bale of hay I rolled out a week ago, which has been sawed on that I was talking about. It had all the rain all over it. They come back and pick at it, but I think they're pretty well done now. I'm going to roll out a bale of hay now, in a, probably another five days' time. And that'll probably do them by then. That green grass should have started to creep back in from that rain. That area there, it's probably, oh, that's about a foot deep, but generally it's around about six to eight inches, which is way too heavy. For a thatch layer, it's not allowing the sun to penetrate through and it does come out, and that'll end up killing the grass underneath. So, what I do is I spread it over there to areas which are a lot less, there's virtually no thatch. It's been overgrazed over winter because, like I said, we haven't had much rain here, but we've had probably lucky to have three inches in the last six months. So, I'll spread that over and that'll give it an armour on the soil. So, when the sun does come out, the sun's going to find it harder to pull that moisture out of the ground with a nice thatch layer, probably four inches, three to four inches over top.
I'm happy with that now. That's spread evenly, roughly between that three to four inches across the ground. Before we go on to the next chore, I'll show you what I love about bale feeding. Come down here. If you have a look right there, this is barley straw. If you have a look right there, see all the seeds? The seed bank in your grass mix helps germinate, as you can see there. The roots are coming off the end of those seeds. And that's what thickens up your pasture. So I try and get half a truckload of hay in at a time. And every 12 months I try and get a different species of hay or pasture mix in the bales I buy. Then you're getting that diversity of seed mix back onto the ground. And you probably it's probably not going to all germinate because you haven't got good soil to seed to soil contact I should say. But that's why you roll it out. The hooves of the cows press it down into the ground and then when you get rain on top it pushes it down even further. Because this is being continually grazed at the moment, I know they'll come through and a lot of this seed, this barley grass that'll shoot up, will get pulled out rather quickly once it germinates and starts to get any height about it. But when I get the cell system finally up and going, that won't happen. Because it's gonna be anywhere between 45 to 65 days till they come back. So it would have had a chance to grab the soil. And if they are pulling too much off, and I find out I'm losing a lot through grazing, I'll just skip this area and come back again. So 124, 100, about 120 days later with second pass. And by that time, we'd had a chance to take to the soil. I knew it'd only be a matter of time before Robert the Bruce realized that gate was open and come into this green pasture. So he's not used to green grass. He'd been out west for quite some time over this drought so a lot of it's been hay fed out there and, gra and grain fed so he's loving this green grass at the moment as you can see I'd hate to get in there now and try and push him out of there he'd be stubborn as a mule he ain't going nowhere while that green grass is in there Next on the agenda is to close in this bit of fence line, this timeless fence line here from that New Zealand A-frame brace there. Right round through those H sections, through the A-frame corners and back onto that front A-frame corner there which butts onto the front of my property. So that's six strand, plain wire. Get stuck into it and we'll run that wire out. I'm putting a spring gate here what I did is I made some loops for the spring gate to hook onto so the gripple's got two holes so you strain it through there and then you put that wire loop it leave yourself about a foot and a half and then you can put it back through that second hole and push it back through the hole in the post and that's about two inches 
loop there, 50 mil. And the rest of the wire, you can either use, I oh, you like using split bolts, you can join it there as a split bolt, or you can just turn it round, twist it around the wire a few times. six strands of high tensile gel wire have now been completed and run through this entire section through those New Zealand A-frame braces and T-posts and I've terminated it there at that corner. We just need to add a jumper wire now so I can run the electricity from the new section we just put in across to this front section installed a few months ago. This is that gap I was telling about from my electric fence to the four strand barbed wire. I need to fill this. This was supposed to be the last job for the day. But I made some phone calls and I've since found out they only make a clamping system for 80 mil, which is roughly just over the three inch, not for four inch pipe. Everything else they've got is a system like this and it can't hold the weight of pipes because I don't want the pipe touching this section. I just don't want a chance of it shorting out. So it's got to be holding itself, holding its own in the air with about a 30 mil gap. And as you can see, I was going to drill a hole in here and put a post in, but where they've concreted out there, I've only got about, oh, say, three quarters of a foot. And I know this post is an eight inch diameter. So roughly a foot down, I'm going to have a concrete slab and it'll probably join up with the edge of this. So I really can't drill down and put a post in there. So I'll have to go back to the drawing board and work out what I'm going to do here. I may have to weld some cattle rail or bull rail under here. So we're not going to get that one done today. So have a good morning, have a great afternoon and a terrific evening guys, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later.